why don't you insert any miracle or sign or wonder here in this yeah. sentence yeah. to prove that you are Jesus? So why don't you do a thing to prove that you're Jesus? Well, I already know who I am. Um, so there's no point in me performing any miracle in order to prove that I'm Jesus because I already know who I am. I don't need to prove to myself who I am because I know who I am. And I don't need to prove to anybody else who I am because I'm not egotistical. I don't, I don't need them to believe me. I don't need them to, you know, honour me or respect me or treat me in any possible way that people think that I expect. And for that reason, I don't see any purpose to proving that I'm Jesus. By the way, proving that I'm Jesus is quite difficult. And I'll talk maybe in another question about how difficult it is going to be to prove that I'm Jesus from a logical perspective, not from an illogical one. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have no desire to prove that I'm Jesus because, because I don't believe that's the point. Anyway, I know who I am. The people who have come with me know who I am. Um, other people will know who I am sooner or later. It doesn't matter to me when they know. For the majority of them, it might be a lot later than sooner. And that doesn't concern me very much. All that, all that concerns me is that I can just live here on earth teaching the things that I wish to teach that I know are true and that, uh, and, and that I can enjoy that process. Uh, it doesn't even matter if nobody listens to it in the end, to me. It matters to them because if they don't listen to it, they're going to find their life a lot harder than, than, than it needs to be. That's the reality. But it doesn't matter to me. I don't need people to believe who I am in order to have some kind of narcissistic, egotistical, you know, feeling within myself satisfied. I'm, I don't, you know, I, I don't feel any need for people to uh, believe who I am in order for them to come to terms with something about me. I feel the more important thing is that they come to terms with things about themselves and they look at themselves and they examine themselves from a perspective of love and they and they attempt to connect to God. And if they really want to connect to God, they'd do well to listen to what I'm saying to them because I know how to connect to God. That's the reality. Because I have connected to God and, and done so for 2,000 years. So if they listen to me about all that, they'll have a lot better ways of doing that if they listen. But I don't feel they have to listen. You know, it's just a choice. Just like it's a choice whether they believe me or not or accept me or not or even listen to me while I'm saying that I'm Jesus. Majority of people don't listen to me when I say that I'm Jesus about any subject, even you know, even a subject that's not related to whether I'm Jesus or not. <laughs> and uh, I find that quite amusing too. But but there's not much I can do about that, and also there's not much I want to do about that. I don't believe I need to prove to people anything about my own identity. There is a lot of things that I want to prove about God, and that I want to prove about God's laws. And I'm already engaged in the process of attempting to prove those things. But there's not much I want to prove about myself. So what about the idea that if you did do X miracle, whatever it is, a lot more people might take you seriously or take your claim that you're Jesus seriously? Well, that might be true, but unfortunately they still wouldn't understand very much. Because if the only reason why you listen to somebody is that they perform a miracle, then uh, it, it's not a very good reason to listen to somebody. Like, there are many miracles, or what people call miracles on this earth, that are very, very dark and evil, actually. Mm -hmm. You know, that, are, that where dark spirits overcloak a person and they do something that is actually very, very damaging to others. Now, if you then listen to that person for the rest of your life, you're going to be in a lot of serious trouble in your future, particularly after you've passed into the spirit world and you start recognising all of the laws that you break in that place. So I wouldn't recommend that to anyone at all. Just because somebody performs a miracle or what seems to be a miracle on this planet, it doesn't mean you should listen to them. What, when I think you should listen to somebody is when they show you what love is and when they explain the truth to you and when they are willing to give you information, and when they are willing to you know, be open and, about what is truth, rather than closed down and deceitful about it. 
they are the kind of people I feel you should listen to. And there are many people who do perform so-called miracles on earth through the help of spirits, of course, who are in the spirit world performing these miracles through them, that people on earth believe are miracles that have very, very dark intentions and are very unloving as individuals. And I suggest to the people on earth that you don't need to listen to those kind of people either. You need, you need to examine things from a perspective of love. Now, if we're examining things from a perspective of love, then you could see you could dismiss a lot of information that comes to you because a lot of stuff that comes to us is not very loving. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff presented by the media is not very loving and a lot of stuff pre presented by people generally to us is not very loving. And we can dismiss a lot of information that way if we use love as our filter rather than whether a person performs a miracle as our filter. So you're really saying that signs and miracles and wonders on this planet are not necessarily a good measure of love because yeah. there's a lot of other processes that could come into play. Exactly. There's a lot of laws that can be engaged by people who are evil in their intentions and, and I choose not to engage them. But if a person was evil in their intentions, they do choose to engage them, which would be seemingly miraculous at the time to other people, but which are not very helpful to their future progression in love. Mm -hmm. and certainly not helpful for their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But those people are engaging some of God's laws, but in a dark way. Yes, they, it's, like, it's like a lot of God's laws. So, for example, if we examine a lot of God's laws, and now we're entering a philosophical discussion, and that's fine, but, but if you examine a lot of God's laws, you will see that God has given us this beautiful gift, and then if we use it badly, it becomes like a weapon. Mm -hmm. So, for example, sex is a beautiful gift. And if we engage it in harmony with the laws of God, it will remain such for the rest of our existence. But if we engage it out of harmony with the laws of God, it can become a weapon so much that diseases and viruses and even death can result from the use of sex. So this is an example of how laws can be engaged in a positive or negative direction using our will. So once we come to understand a law, we can use it positively or negatively. Now, mankind came to understand the law of how to split the atom, as the saying goes. Mm -hmm. And the very first use of it was to destroy hundreds of thousands of people. That's man's darkness mm -hmm. that causes that. So God allowed the possibility of the discovery of these laws. Once man discovers them, many times mankind used them negatively. The whole flight was, you know, controlled flight developed in the early 1900s. By 1914, it was being used to drop bombs on people. Mm -hmm. That's man and the way man uses God's laws. Now, I choose to not use God's laws in those ways. For that reason, I am not going to perform any miraculous thing until all of the things that I do are in harmony with all of God's laws. I'm not going to allow myself to be overcoaked by spirit and perform things like other people on earth are currently doing. I'm not going to allow that to occur because I don't believe it's in harmony with God's laws mm. of love. It's a, it's a way of using the law as a weapon and I don't agree with that. And, and this, is a, this comes down to man's will and how man chooses to use his will. I choose to use my will in harmony with God's laws of love. The average person on the planet chooses to use their will out of harmony with God's laws of love. And the average so-called leader on the planet, whether it's political, religious or otherwise, chooses to use many of God's laws out of harmony with love. That's the average thing that we see happening on the planet. My suggestion is that we need to stop honouring these people who use God's laws out of harmony with love and see it for what it really is. Just a wicked way of using a knife, if you mm -hmm. like. You see, a knife can be a gift if we need it to cut up some food or we need it to pry open something for some survival purpose. It can be a gift. But if you stab it into the heart of somebody, it's a weapon mm -hmm. that is now being used. It's a gift that we had that is now being used for an evil purpose. And there are many things in God's universe that are like that, where God gives us the choice of how we're going to use the gifts we're given. Now... My suggestion to people is that if they want to engage all of God's laws, only 
use the gifts you're given for loving purposes. And that's the only reason why I would ever choose to do something that other people would view as miraculous. Only to use the gift as a, for a loving purpose. Do you feel that it's un, you've mentioned that you feel it would be unloving to do a miracle in order to prove that you were Jesus? Definitely. Why is that? Because it's selfish. The only motivation for doing so would be that people listen to me or you know listen or that I prove who I am to people and I don't see that as a loving motivation. Wouldn't it be loving if people listened to you more since you have some really good things to help them to improve their life and their relationship with God? Only if, it, if, it, if I'm also in the right motivation. So if my motivation is, is e egotism or selfishness or self-aggrandizement or, you know, or glory, then my motivation is impure and I would suggest anybody don't listen to me if you feel that that's what I'm like. Because it, it's, not, it's not a good reason to listen to anybody, I feel. Mm -hmm. You want to listen, no matter what they've got to say, really. And I feel the time to listen to a person is when what they say makes sense and the person themselves lives in harmony with what they're teaching and lives in harmony with love. And it's not loving for a person to put themselves above you. It's not loving for a person to make themselves better than you. So just because I'm saying I'm Jesus, don't assume that I'm saying that I'm better than you. I'm saying I'm a person the same as you. I know more than you do, only because of certain things that have happened. But it's not, I'm not better than you. And God, from God's perspective, I'm your brother. I'm, you know, you're my sister. I'm the same as you are in terms of this. I deserve the same amount of love from God that you deserve. I deserve the same amount of respect that you deserve. I don't deserve anything more or less. And presumably from that statement, um, you are not more able or less able to perform miracles than any other person. Exactly. I am not more able or less able to perform miracles than any other person. If we think of miracles as being something that people on earth don't understand as a normal thing that would occur, well, I don't see it that way. I see it as just an engagement of law. Other people can engage the law just the same as I do. They can perform the same things as I do. Ironically, the Bible actually says that. In fact, the Bible says that they will perform greater works than I performed. That's what the Bible says. And is that true? Well, it's possible, yes. It's definitely possible. It's possible for every single person on earth to perform greater works than what I perform. That's possible. But only by engaging the law only by engaging the law of love. It's certainly possible because God made it possible. All of us are equal, and as soon as we engage the laws that, that determine what happens, then anything can be accomplished. That's reality. And so then, presumably, when you engage the laws in harmony with love, then there might be a loving purpose to perform a miracle which may prove your identity to others? Well, I can't see how it would logically prove my identity to others. Mm -hmm. It may prove that I have the ability to engage the law. Mm -hmm. That's all it improves, really. Yes. See, see, this is what I, this is why I think people's logic is flawed. Just because I engage a law that other people cannot engage, that then causes me to be able to do something in the future that other people cannot do, it still doesn't prove that I'm Jesus. <laughs> Well, and you were saying that other people cannot engage. Surely they can engage it. Well, they can engage it if they engage the same law. Yeah. But if they're not in the same condition, they won't be able to. This I is see. what I'm suggesting. I see. So if they're not in the same condition as I, they will not be, perform be able to perform the same task, if you like, which is engaging the law in a certain direction. Yes. Now, now, when they get into the same condition, they will be able to perform the same law. Once mm -hmm. they have the same knowledge and they have the same amount of love, they'll be able to perform the same thing, exactly the same thing. It's immaterial to God whether you're Jesus or Joe Blow, right? <laughs> yeah. The law engaged will result in the result that it always has. All of God's laws work in this manner. The law engaged always has a result. So this is very disappointing for most people because... <laughs> I, don't, I don't see why it should be disappointing because basically what I'm saying is every one of them can do what Jesus did. Why would that be disappointing? Because there's no way of 
uh, them suddenly Jesus arriving and them having proof of it and feeling more relaxed about the fact that you're back and going to fix everything. Yeah, but this is, a, this is another thing. I cannot fix anything. Like, the reality is if God is not already fixing it, then it can't be fixed unless something else happens. Right? Well, couldn't that be you coming back? No, not at all, because it's, it needs the will of the individual collectively used in order to fix things. One person cannot force his will upon another. So even though I would like to fix things, I cannot fix them without other people's will being engaged along the same directions of love that my will is being engaged. That's the only way that things are going to get fixed. It's impossible for me to fix things any other way. I can't come as some all-conquering warrior on a white horse with a sword and slaughter all the people besides being unloving, um, slaughter all the people who are wicked, my definition of wicked, of course, and, and keep all the people who are righteous, my definition of righteous. You know, I can't do that. It's impossible for me to do that and stay in a condition of love. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if I did that, I could not engage any law. So I certainly couldn't engage a law where I'm riding a horse in the air. I couldn't engage that law under those circumstances because all of God's laws revolve around love. And since all of God's laws revolve around love, it's impossible for me to take an action that's unloving and remain in harmony with the law. And for that reason, I would have to break the law with its subsequent penalty. So basically, you're back here. You're not going to perform any miracles tomorrow, especially not just for the purposes of putting everyone's mind at ease. Correct. Or, and you're basically here to teach us how to embrace our own will in harmony with the laws that God has already defined. And you are yourself in the process of I'm engaging engaged. your own will in harmony with these laws again. Exactly. And it's not completely in harmony with them again. No, not yet, because, uh, because I still have fear. Mm -hmm. while, I re re while fear remains in me, it's impossible for me to engage all of God's laws in harmony with love. Fear must be experienced and released in order for it to leave me. Once that happens, then I become more in harmony with God's laws of love. The more in harmony with God's laws of love I become, the more potential there is for me to do things which other people cannot do, which other people may view as miracles, but which I don't see as miracles at all. Mm -hmm. I see them as just engaging the law. Right? As to me, it's a scientific process that makes a lot of logical sense if you think about it. And we can see that scientific process in in progress through humanity's history, through all sorts of developmental areas. It's the same process that I'm engaged in. I'm just engaged in it at the soul level, which the majority of people don't even believe exists. Mm -hmm. So I'm just engaged in it on a different level. So your return is not really the return of <clears throat> turning water into wine or walking on water or turning loaves into fishes. And neither it was my first visit the same. Yeah, most of those things I never did. I <laughs> it's really about, from what you're saying, creating um, awareness of an opportunity that exists for individuals. To get into more harmony with God's laws of love and therefore be able to be more powerful in the way in which we express ourselves and create in the universe, yes. Which sounds exciting, but probably exciting. could be a bit of a letdown to people. Well, I suppose... Who have a like different I, expectation. Certainly. If a person has an expectation that I come and solve all their problems for them, that's never going to happen. I can't solve all of their problems for them because they created most of their own problems. And as a result, I, I, it's not right for me to solve them. They need to learn how to solve them themselves. Or, mm -hmm. or even better than that would be solve them and stop creating new ones. <laughs> that would be fantastic. They need to learn how to do those particular things. And I've had to do those things too. So I have to go through the process of learning how to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and I am continu continuously in that process. And that's the process that everyone else is in too. So I feel on, on one level the second coming, if you like, the second coming of Jesus, which is what we're experiencing, mm -hmm. um, could teach us a lot about the engagement of our own desires, our own passions, our own power, our own, or all these other things that, that God wishes us to engage and that God has given us the ability to engage individually in, in equality with the same equal stance as Jesus can engage it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I fully expect that there'll be people in the future that engage some of God's laws that I've never known before. 
and therefore they do something that I view as miraculous until I learn the law. Right? That's what I fully expect. And, uh, and I feel that if people understood that, we have a lot of progression occurring on this planet in lots of different areas. However, the problem of them wanting me to be the solution to all of their issues without them being personally engaged, this is not good. This is uh, actually a flaw in their character and nature. It's a flaw with regard to the issue of humanity's creation. In other words, humanity wants to create badness and then not deal with the consequence. And I can't agree with that. God doesn't agree with that either. God says, if you're going to create badness, you're going to have to deal with the consequence of badness. You know, if you're going to create goodness, then you'll deal with the consequence of goodness. This is part of the law, in fact. So I feel that if people understood that about the second coming, that it would be a, the second coming would be a very powerful help to each individual on the planet. Right? Unfortunately, I don't know how soon that's going to occur <laughs> because I don't have control of people's will. Unlike what the Bible tends to suggest that I do, I don't. I don't have control over people. People will do what they choose to do. And if they choose to reject everything I'm saying until such a point in time in the future, and it will be in the future, at some point they'll accept what I'm saying, uh, but it may be well after they've died and passed into the spirit world and experienced life in disappointment there as well before they realise what's going on. And um, there's no, nothing I can do about that except tell the truth. And this is why I said in the first century, the truth will set you free. The truth has set me free. The truth will set you free. It's only the truth that will set you free. Nobody performing a miracle for you will set you free. In fact, if anything... Somebody performing a miracle for you will enslave you because you'll believe you're dependent on the individual, on that person, rather than understanding that you, yourself, personally, can perform the same thing. Yeah. Thank you. Mm.